Please welcome Cybersecurity Advisor Harry Paul and Assistant Professor of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science at Washington State University, Adam Hahn, to the S4 Sponsor Stage. All right, thank you very much for coming. You're here at uh, Tax Surface and ICS. Do you have a badnessometer? And I'm happy to have Adam Hahn here with me from Washington State. Uh, so the inspiration for this talk is a uh, in part from a quote from Gary McGraw, uh, badnessometers register values on the range from deep trouble to who knows. But uh, you know this can be useful because if you're in deep trouble, then maybe you'll do something about it. And I, I really like this quote because there's a gap between the expectation and reality with a lot of tools that people use to assess systems. A lot of the times people want to get an A plus and know that they've done everything right and feel really confident in their system but that's not really what these tools are about. It's about catching the low hanging fruit and it's about understanding where some obvious gaps are, but you have to have a follow up conversation and really understand um, your systems or else you're losing a lot of value. Um, so we see a common uh, case, use case where these are used is in the IT space, such as with public websites. So we have a couple examples here of securityheaders.io and uh, observatory by Mozilla. And uh, I just want to point out here that uh, as a badnessometer, since that's what this talk is about, uh, you can see that the badness sticks right out here for securityheaders.io in the non-adoption of feature policy for this site. And so the grade overall is still uh, you know, the, the good grade, but it's pointing out a feature that's not implemented that could enhance things further. And that's where these tools are useful, showing the gaps. Um, from uh, public security scores, there's some services that observe all the public endpoints of different companies and put together a score that is supposed to reflect their security posture. And so again, for this one, we have a few areas where the badness jumps out, where they found some application headers that were not ideal, uh, some def desktop software, and the fact that we had publicly disclosed a breach. And so those things uh, brought us from, in the trend you can see, we went from the top of that industry uh, range to the middle ground and we're working our way back up. And that's an important thing to reflect because security posture changes over time. So uh, this talk isn't about uh, IT security tools. This one is about OT tools. So um, first I'm going to talk about OSI Soft's contribution in this area. We have some open source Pi security tools to look at the security of uh, Pi systems and kind of highlight what areas have gaps. Um, so there's the security configuration auditing tool, the Pi security audit tools that's available on our tech support site and is open so developed open source on GitHub. And then um, we also, um, another open source tool that we have is the Pi security desired state configuration resources. And those are a, a module that allows you to do configuration as code using the Microsoft desired state configuration uh, mechanism. That's also developed open source on GitHub, but the focus uh, is on the auditing scripts for this talk. So the Pi security audit tools uh, validate different components of our system. We focus on the, the core components, the data archive, the uh, AF server, the p visualization application and our API to access um, data and uh, the Microsoft SQL Server in as much as it's used for the asset framework server and uh, our visualization app. Um, and you'll see at the bottom here that the two outputs of the tool are uh, an HTML report and uh, a raw CSV uh, report that you can pull into Excel to do any analysis you want. But the idea with the HTML report is to give you a clear picture of what uh, the most important findings are. And so a theme in this talk is uh, attack surface. And uh, we think that attack surface reduction is just as important as getting the code right and um, hardening needs to be done at every phase. You need to design the product securely. You need to give it sensible defaults, and then it needs to be deployed securely. That's how we, we really need to assess attack surface at each of these phases. So to that end, uh, in the security audit tools, one of the things we look at is the implementation of the platform and making sure that it's a minimal surface area there. And the best way to do that is start off with Windows Server Core as opposed to the full desktop experience. There's a whole lot of uh, extra stuff that you don't need with the full desktop experience. Um, so right out of the box, you start with fewer ports, less patching required, less maintenance, um, and just ultimately more secure when there's, there's less code that you're trying to secure there. 
Another emphasis in the tool is using the more recent versions of the product, and uh, that sometimes that's not as uh, intuitive why that's such an important security um, thing. So the PyData Archive security development lifecycle uh, defense history table here uh, is taken from our release notes. But this is a great artifact to show how important it is to use the latest versions because as uh, the, the different versions of the product came out, more defenses are available and compiled into the product. And an example I'll draw attention to is at the bottom of this table, uh, the QSpecter flag uh, as a compiler defense that wasn't available until the more recent compilers included it. So you're only going to get that with the more recent versions. Uh, authentication management is really important. So um, with the PyData Archive, there are some legacy mechanisms of PyUser and PyTrust authentication, but the most secure mechanism is to leverage the integration with um, Windows security. Uh, so we make sure that we highlight with our customers that they should be leveraging Windows security as opposed to the old legacy methods. Now, I'll draw attention to the fact that when you're using this Windows integrated security, not only are you getting the strong authentication, but you're also getting the benefit of our automatically enabled transport security. And uh, that, so that means you have signing of the messages for integrity and you have encryption for privacy. Now, this uh, visual here, what, uh, is from a CyberX report that shows the distribution of uh, industrial protocols and networks that they observed. And so you see, you know, 58% of networks that they observed had Modbus in them, 28% had Ethernet IP, all the way down to uh, OSI Soft Pi is the fifth most common from the networks that they observed. Um, and so the addition to this is the padlocks that we put on there to reflect whether or not those offer transport security. And in some cases with like Modbus, the standards body now has a standard for it, but the adoption of that standard is not universal. Um, so how do we take all these defenses and put them in context with one another and evaluate severities for the tool? We used a technique called bow tie analysis methodology to kind of make sure that we're comparing things on a level footing. So for this, we take a top event of the application server's compromise. Um, and uh, we're looking at the hazard of, a of operating an application server. And so then we look at what are all the bad things that could happen to that server. It could uh, see some uh, snooping attempts. Uh, someone could get admin credentials. There could be a zero day vulnerability. And then on the other side of the compromise, we look at what are the sort of things that could happen? What are the consequences? So uh, could somebody install a rat on it? Uh, could critical data be unavailable to people who need it to make decisions, et cetera? So once we have an idea of the event space, all the stuff that can happen, what we want to do is we want to put barriers between uh, those attacks and the compromise happening, and then between the compromise and then the worst case scenario. And so this is a, an eye chart. We don't expect you to be able to read this, but um, this is here to illustrate that we've mapped out all these available defenses, and we realize that we have a lot of documentation spread out across our knowledge base on how people can apply these things. but this is a lot of information for people to pull together and correlate on their own. So um, we have some resources that aggregate those things together, like our cybersecurity page and our security configuration document. But uh, really what helps more is if we have something catered to your system that says what the gaps are between the best practices and what's there currently and helps prioritize it uh, for you as best as we can without actually you know, operating your system. And so the audit report itself is dated because, again, security changes over time. You want to have these um, uh, run these sort of tools periodically. Uh, it has the uh, high severity things sorted for you. And um, we also give little hyperlinks to recommendations. And the recommendations give advice for how to um, mitigate these issues and uh, how to get to more documentation to get more details. Um, so with that, I'll hand over to Adam to talk about uh, his tool. All right. Thanks. So, so at, at WSU, we're uh, doing some research looking at similar concepts. And, and you know, look at this slide. You have developed some uh, routine attack surface by design, by, by, deploy, or by default or deployment. And so we're trying to develop some, some tools that can, that can help across multiple of these phases. And, to, and what the tool we've developed is, is called the Attack Surface Host Analyzer or what we call AHA. And this is uh, work funded by uh, the Department of Energy. I, I'm supposed to have my uh, 
little uh, uh, a, a note or thanks and notification on there, but I didn't make this slide. Um, and uh, we're, the point, the goal is, you know, the point is you can't ever be perfect and ensure software doesn't have any vulnerabilities, right? So even if it's really well developed, great uh, software development life cycles, it's still going to have vulnerabilities. Um, but one thing you can do is make sure that software is doing the right things to prevent uh, the risk of, of exploitation or the impact of that exploitation. And so really the goal of our tool is to help uh, assess that, right? Software is complex and so if you're developing software you still might have lots of different uh, uh, binaries, packages you're depending on from other parties. Uh, you don't really have that much understanding of, of this. Is that, okay, you shouldn't have, uh, uh, you might not have that uh, strong of understanding of what this other software is doing um, and you want to have some tools to uh, verify this before you actually deploy your code. Um, if you're a, if you're a, a ICS operator and you get some really critical software and you're trying to evaluate, you know, how good is this, um, it's really hard to look at that software and understand, like, what are the security capabilities of that. And so uh, we have AHA that is, uh, the goal is to kind of address these two needs, uh, both by design and by deployment. So there's, there's two components to AHA. There's uh, the, uh, uh, what we call the AHA scraper. Um, and this is just a really lightweight tool that it's gonna run on whatever your target environment it is and collect some information about the processes running, the connectivity, the security capabilities of those processes. Um, and the goal is this is a lightweight tool. It's just gonna give you a report file um, that you can uh, then take back and run into the, uh, what we call the AHA GUI. Uh, and this is where it's going to provide some visualization of what is your attack surface. It's going to provide some uh, information about the different processes, uh, what, what's the uh, ultimate score, where is the risk at in your software platform, and also some recommendations on what, what the resulting impact is. Uh, so how are we defining attack surface? I think this is a, a you know, general broad question. And so uh, you know, if we look at a whole system attack surface, um, we're, we're, we're going to first look at down like what do we call attack surface for a process, right? And for a process, we're going to say, well, how interconnected is that process to other remote systems, right? If it's more connected, there's probably more attack surface for that process. And you know, from that process, is it implementing good security mechanisms, right? So as Harry mentioned, there's different versions of, of, of uh, the Pi historian and some of them are implementing more and more advanced security capabilities over time and those are better to use, right? Less risk of compromise. And so, you know, different operating systems have a lot of great security features built into them. These are not always enabled. So we're looking at is this stuff, is something like address space layout randomization, data execution prevention, a code flow integrity. Are those implemented for all these processes on your system? Um, so that, you know, if there is a vulnerability, the, the likelihood of exploiting it is much lower. Furthermore, you want to maybe ensure, like, how do you know where that even those binaries came from? So we're looking at, you know, verifying uh, the, the uh, authenticity using like the um, Microsoft Authenticode and verifying that everything's properly signed. So you know that the software did come from who you think the software came from, right? And so verifying that across uh, uh, all, all the processes because right now there's not really good ways to do that kind of auditing. Um, and then also, what's the privilege? Is it running as like a super high level system level privilege or a low level network service, right? And so the point is if it's, if it's remotely accessible and it's as high privilege, that's got a lot of attack surface. If it's, if it's remotely accessible and a, uh, a low privilege, that's obviously a lot less risky. And so we're trying to c combine all these into a score and then um, uh, showing the computing the attack surface of these. So what, what happens after we run it, you look at something like this, which is, the, which is the GUI visualization. And so on the right, you kind of have the red nodes, which are the remote systems that are being, uh, uh, can, are, are interconnections. Uh, all the, on the left, there's a processes. So there's some OS processes and then whatever the application processes are. And then for all the processes, we give them a, a score. And then we color them from, from red, which is high risky, to green, which is they're doing great and they're implementing all the best connections. And so from just this example, you can see at the top, there's a bunch of these old legacy binaries in this platform, and a number of them are, are remotely connected to external systems. And so that would be obviously a clear place where there's a lot of attack surface um, and probably a lot of risk. Um, but in the same software platform, there's a bunch of, on the bottom, a bunch of green nodes that are also inter uh, remotely connected. and. Uh, uh, but are also implementing great security mechanisms. And so that would be a place where there's lower risk. And then we also have some a node representing the externally listening port ports. Um, so we have some case studies of, of this on real systems, right? Um, so uh, on, the, on the right is uh, uh, some general uh, control center software we had in our test bed uh, running on Windows uh, 2008 uh, R2, which is a very old OS. 
doesn't implement a lot of great security mechanisms. And so we run a scan on there. You can see there's a lot of uh, orange and yellow processes, meaning, yeah, that's not great from a security perspective. And we look at the score for the external and internal processes. We have a score about 9.5, 8.2 out of 100. Um, so we were seeing this in our lab, and then we talked with uh, uh, the people from OSIsoft, and they said this is a really interesting tool. Why don't we try it? And so when we try to run their software on there, um, we see what we have here on the, on the left, which is uh, this is Pi Historian 2017, with the, which is a modern, with, on a modern Windows server, 2016 server. And you can see the scores, everything green uh, for the most part, scores of 71, 72, or 62 out of 100, right? So if you can look at this, it's just clearly you don't have to, you can run the scan in five minutes, compare these two platforms and say like, yeah, the one on the left is the one that I want to be running in my, my environment, right? Um, this is another example. Uh, here we have a, a newer version of the, the same set control, control center platform, but in, this time in, installed on 2016, so all that uh, orange and, and yellow went to kind of uh, yellow and green, kind of upgraded a little bit with modern security mechanisms. The scores went up considerably, uh, but if you look at now compared to maybe like the Pi Data Archive um, on, on 2016 core, which is you know a more hardened system, uh, more limited attack surface, now the scores are going up 80 out of 100, which is really good, right? So the idea here is it's a simple way we can try to convey this, this information. Um, so I was going to uh, show a quick video of how this works. Um, if we could play the video here, uh, what we're going to see is, is this is the AHA uh, scraper that's going to um, run and, and collect some data on this. Uh, that's going to run an assessment scan. So this, you run this on the, this in the Windows one, it's just a PowerShell, and then uh, the Linux one runs a, a Bash script or a Python version right now. And then you get the graph here. You can view the results. Um, we can show the, the, on the, on the, you know, the, the the right is on the, the external nodes. Um, you can view all the details. So you can click on a process and see, like, why did that process get this score? So you can see this is uh, explorer.exe. It gets a 90. It's implementing ASLR. It's implementing DEP. It's implementing uh, six, it's a 64 bit process. It's got control full guard. It's, uh, it's signed binary. So it's great from a perspective, uh, all around perspective. So that's got a really great score, right? Um, and that's kind of information you can easily go there. It's, uh, it's interactive. So you know, the graph, we're working on the graph layout, it's not always great. Sometimes it's great to move around nodes. Um, you can look at connections and I highlight uh, where stuff's being connected to. That's not always that obvious when you some, get some of the really complex software processes we have. Um, we try to be able to hide and show uh, different processes, like getting rid of the OS processes, which you might not have that much control over. You might focus on your uh, system level processes. Um, uh, I try to just give you different uh, different types of data if you need it. Um, we're still working, uh, it's still under development, so we're looking at adding new features and we're definitely interested in, in that. We do have searching, you know, because some of these things can get pretty complex and you might want to search for specific processes that you're concerned about um, and that'll highlight those processes and you can have the ability to hide and or show those processes uh, through the searching. So, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm, so, the, the highlighting is a little bit probably more observable if you're right there on a monitor. I think it sh doesn't show as well uh, on, the, on the display like this, but um, you know, that's a way to help just you know, provide a better uh, user interface to the tool and provide you more access with, uh, with the data. Um, and another great feature I think is you can just broadly search for like our security mechanisms implemented. So here is a search for you know, who's not using Control Flow Guard, and you can see we're going to highlight all the processes where that's not implemented. Or maybe another really good one would be if you, uh, it, what, what code is not properly signed, right? Do a search and you can quickly auto, okay, these are not signed. Um, we also provide some more data, exactly what data is used to make this decision. Um, the number of, here you can see the number of processes, the overall score. We, we compute the score of external and internal differently because external is probably where the key attack surface is. So you want to worry more about that, but you can see this is a platform with a 90 out of 100 score, which is remarkable. Um, and then you can see all the data we've collected from that, verifying what the attack surface is for that, for that system. Um, so you can get a little more detailed information even or about all the ports and processes that are, that are connected as well. Um, so uh, some other uses, uh, you know, right off the bat, we found some cases where people are finding processes they don't think they should have. So this is a case where, you know, we have a system that's a, maybe a production system and it's got a printer spool installed, right? So how many people in ICS need printer spools? Uh, probably not very many. And so that's kind of stuff that uh, we hope this helps uh, Identify or and also checking hardening techniques. So we can look at like looking at systems uh, that are more hard and doing scoring. So we showed an example of a uh, you know here a system uh, uh, re 
with reducing our processes, that gets a score of 100 uh, through just implementing all the best efforts and having a very low, low attack surface, right? So that's the kind of the goal we have with uh, AHA is just trying to help you better understand, better analyze the software, and, and make better decisions about what the risk is of that. All right, so thanks, Adam. Um, so our call to action, um, we have it in two, two steps. One is for today and one is for, you know, in, uh, in the future. So we just put a two week threshold. So the first one is to uh, give a tweet uh, with your opinion of this talk or some observation you have related to attack surface and hashtag ICS attack surface. Um, and then the one due in two weeks is to try the tool and let us know what you think. Um, for both these tools, uh, we're interested in the same sort of feedback uh, in terms of uh, any case studies that people are willing to provide. We'd love to see the output of the tool, um, any feature requests or uh, usability um, usability improvements that people see uh, would be useful to them. Those are the sort of things that we're looking for. Adam, anything to add? Yeah, it's the same thing. I mean, we're trying to understand, you know, this is our perspective of attack service and what factors contribute it um, and what data to collect. Uh, I think there's a lot of uh, broader information we can get. Um, and so any uh, opinions on the tool, trying it on ICS platforms, we'd love to see the results, get more testing information, um, you know, talk to other researchers about what they think are important concepts. Um, uh, you know, we're still, we're still actively in development and so the more information we get from industry, I think the better the tool will result to be and that's really our goal is to develop something really useful. Okay, great. Um, with that, I think we have a few minutes left, so are there any questions from the audience? Uh, we'll also be available at the OSI booth in the ICS Village to talk uh, after this as well. So, any limitations in the versions of operating systems for the tools, like older versions of Pi collectors? Yeah, for the for the Pi security audit tools, we are um, for the Pi security audit tools. You need to be running uh, PowerShell three or above, but that's pretty inclusive as far as uh, versions go. For Windows operating system, I think 2008 R2 will start supporting that. Um, you want to comment for the AHA GUI or the AHA program? Yeah, I mean, uh, so we're trying to do assessments across all, and so certain operating systems don't implement certain mechanisms, right? And so uh, the scores are just, if you run something on a 2008 system, it just looks bad, right? Because of, uh, you know, the operating system dependency. But in general, we can run on anything. I think we need to run uh, uh, also PowerShell. Um, on, on Windows to, to run the, the, the uh, scraper. Yeah, and I'll just note that um, we've used the scraper on our, our applications and some of our test servers, but we've also used it to evaluate some internal projects that we have that used container hosts and containers and uh, Linux-based systems, and it, it works great on both. Hey, uh, in your scoring, um, you said you'd never seen anything at 100% yet? Or oh no, we have. I mean, okay. yeah, there is some hundred. I mean, kind of the score is starts at a hundred, and you just get reduced board stuff you're doing bad. Okay, so you have a scale. So yeah, far. yeah, okay. yeah, and that's kind of a thing. We're still work, kind of a work in progress, right? Okay. So, but, yeah. so do you add any weight to you know, if you see a vulnerability or something that's insecure? Does it carry more weight? I mean, you have red, uh, red, orange, and I think green. Yeah. Are, they, are they the only three categories you're using, or you have scales in between that or weights? We have an actual score between zero and 100, and then those, those get, and, and there's a cutoff, and I don't remember off the top of my head, but you know, over this is uh, gonna be green, and between this and this is gonna be yellow, and between this and this is gonna be orange. And stuff like, if you're running a system, really the highest privilege, that's gonna drop you down, right? And if it's not signed, right, right off the bat, or something like a really modern protections like I think a ASLR, those things are just right off the bat, we think they're gonna drop you down a lot. Um, and uh, you know, so so to have to have green, you have to have kind of whatever what you would recommend. It's like what is today the best effort of of or the best uh, industry standard for protection using modern you know techniques to to prevent exploitation. <laughs>